Hey guys, it's Drew with Feast. Uh, we have another online lecture for you today. Um, today we're going to be going into nutrition label reading and specifically in part one of this demonstration is going to be covering the ingredient list. So by now you know that at Feast um, we share the philosophy of eating whole foods. Um, we know the benefits of eating whole foods. You get the most nutritious form of it, and it's easier for your body to uh, absorb all the vitamins and minerals that come from these whole foods. Um, with that being said, a balanced diet doesn't only include fruits and vegetables and, and whole foods. Uh, we understand that there are items that you might want to buy for the sake of convenience or speed or to add a, more flavor to a certain recipe that you're already doing. Um, so that's where nutrition label reading really comes in handy because not all these items are made equally, they're made different. So um, having the knowledge of knowing what's in there can help you make the educated decision when you're at the grocery store. So how do you choose and, and why is label reading so important? Um, we'll get into that in a second, but just a little fun fact to start it off. The average grocery store has over 40,000 products on their shelves. So it could be a daunting task going in there trying to differentiate which one you should choose over another one. Is this one healthy? Is this one unhealthy? So hopefully today by going over uh, the ingredient list on the nutrition label, we'll be able to make that a little bit easier for you. Um, label reading is really the most important skill you can develop to help you decide quickly if a packaged product is healthy or it might be on the unhealthier side. Uh, so you can choose, you know, do I want to put this in the shopping cart or am I going to leave it on the shelf? So we're going to start with the basics today. Um, when you look at a package, there's two things that you want to do. First of all, is ignore the front label. And second, is flip the package over and start reading that nutrition label. So rule number one, ignore the front label and check the ingredients. So when you look at this cheesy burger uh, front label, there's a few things that might stand out. In the top left corner, all natural. In, uh, in bright red and yellow coloring to grab your attention. Then we have in the middle GMO-free pasta, gluten-free, and wheat-free. Um, so all these product manufacturers know that the front of the product is the first thing you're gonna see. So this is their advertising space. So this is where they try to, to grab someone who's walking by the aisle and really get their attention to buy their product. Um, and not everything that they say on the front label is regulated. So they could say something, for example, all natural, and they might have a different definition of what all natural is opposed to us, the educated, conscientious um, shopper trying to buy healthy products. Another thing that manufacturers like to do is on the front of the label, they like to say what's not in the product. So right here, GMO free, gluten free, wheat free. But what matters to us is what's in the product, not what's not in the product. So that's why we go ahead and flip over the product and, and start taking a look at the back of the label. <clears throat> so when we're looking at the back of this label uh, and reading the ingredients, we see a few things in here that might stand out to you. Maltodextrin, for example, hydrolyzed corn protein, sodium cycloaluminate, right? These are big, long words that you or I or the average person walking in the grocery store aren't necessarily going to know what that is. And that can kind of hint at us um, about decisions that we're going to make about that product. So like I said, uh, it says all natural in the top left corner. And that term genuinely doesn't mean anything. Um, food companies are free to use this unregulated on labels to try to sell us something. Um, so that's just something that we want to keep in mind. The front of the package is trying to sell you the product. The back of the package with the nutrition label is really telling you what is in that item that you're buying. So rule number two, five ingredients or less. Um, this rule is surprisingly a lot harder to follow than it seems. Um, next time you go to the store and you, and you start checking out some labels and you look, you're going to see how many products have way more than five ingredients in them. Um, so we're going to take a look at an example of peanut butter right here. So on the left-hand side, we have um, a, a jar of peanut butter from the store um, that has 
good thing the first ingredient is peanuts. But then we have hydrogenated vegetable oils, um, mono and diglycerides, magnesium oxide, acid, folic acid, excuse me, pyroxidine, hydrochloride. There's a bunch of items in there that A, we don't know, and B, there's way more than five ingredients. If you look at the example that we have on the right-hand side, the only ingredient is roasted peanuts. So in the grocery store, um, if you have two items and you're having trouble deciding which one that you want to pick, um, it's safe to say to go with the one that has less ingredients. And in this example, the one on the right side only has one ingredient, roasted peanuts. And that's exactly what we're looking for. <clears throat> okay, rule number three, no ingredient that sounds like science um, or that it's hard to pronounce. Um, so right here in this example, we have two ingredients that are circled. We have pyroxidine hydrochloride and thiamine, thiamine hydrochloride, excuse me. Um, and just so you guys know, sometimes manufacturers do include sciencey word ingredients or things that we might not know um, in the product to get us vitamins and minerals back into our diet. So it's not always a bad thing. I just want you guys to know that. But if you wanna be on the safe side and play it safe, if you're reading the ingredient list and you see something like that, it's hard to pronounce, you don't know how to say it, it looks like a science word, um, choose another product just to be on the safe side. It's not always bad, but you know you wanna go in there as an educated shopper, so uh, just play it safe. Um, rule number four, avoid sugar and oil is one of the first three ingredients. Um, so when you're looking at the ingredient list, the order of the ingredients is related to the concentration of that ingredient in the product. So what that means is, let's say the first ingredient in a list is um, high fructose corn syrup, for example. That means that most of that product is going to be high fructose corn syrup. If the second ingredient is a food coloring, for example, that means that's going to be the second most uh, concentrated ingredient in that product. And all the way down the ingredient list to the very last thing, whatever's listed last means there's going to be the least amount of that product in the, in the <laughs> excuse me, least amount of ingredient in the product. Um, so when looking at food labels, if you see sugar or oil as one of the first three ingredients, um, we want to try to make a healthier decision because that means that product is going to be mostly sugar or fat. Um, products with hydrogenated and or partially hydrogenated oils anywhere in the ingredient list should also be avoided. Um, in the past, we've talked about healthy and unhealthy fats. In a few of our food demos, we've shared some healthy fats, such as avocados and nuts. Hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated oils are going to be what we consider the unhealthy fats. Um, they'll also be listed as trans fat, trans fats, excuse me, on the nutrition label. So when reading, we really want to find um, alternative items to, to those that have hydrogenated or partly hydrogenated oils in them. Uh, also, sugar has more than one name. Um, these manufacturing companies know that people don't want to buy products that have a lot of sugar in them if, they, um, if they're educated about food uh, label reading. So they use other words to kind of disguise what sugar might be in their product. Um, so like I said, sugar has many different names. Uh, highlighted in red right here are a few examples of those. We have dextrose, fructose, glucose, lactose, maltose, saccharose, xylose. Now, something that I learned as a kid uh, watching cartoons on Saturday morning, they were doing a public health nutrition campaign, evidently. And they were telling us about sugars and they listed all these with ending in OSE, like I said, dextrose, fructose, and so on. And on this little commercial campaign they were doing, um, in big red letters it said, and you know what, it all rhymes with gross. And it's a silly joke, because sugar's not necessarily gross, but um, it was a good way to remember it and it stuck with me literally you know, 20 years later. So if it ends in that OSE and it rhymes with gross, then you know it's a sugar. And like I said, I know it's a silly joke, but those, uh, those are easy to remember when you kind of have an example to tie it to. So keep that in mind as well. So then when we look at whole grains, um, we want to look at the ingredient list and make sure 
whole wheat is the first thing listed. Even for me, when buying grain products, um, it could be challenging to, to know if you're buying 100% whole wheat. Um, like I said, the front of the label is where they try to sell you the product. So you might see something that says multi-grain or total grain. They use different phrases to try to make it seem like it's a healthy product, when in reality, it it's, can be a processed food. Um, so the only way to know is by reading what's actually in it, like we've been going over on the back of the label. Um, cereals, pastas, breads might have whole grain in them as a part of the ingredient, but they're kind of stretching the, the truth because it's not 100% whole wheat or a whole grain. Um, so by flipping over the back of the label, we're gonna compare these two we have right here. So the one on the left, the first ingredient is enriched unbleached wheat flour. If you look at the one on the right, we have whole wheat flour. So you know, the one on the right, the first ingredient, what it's mainly made of is gonna be whole wheat flour. The one on the left, enriched, unbleached, these are just other words for processed um, wheat flour. So you know that that one is gonna be on the processed side because it doesn't start with whole wheat. Um, you also wanna look on the labeling for it to say 100% whole wheat, like it does on this package right here. Um, so going a little further with that, if you're still confused when it comes to buying whole grains, um, there's another thing we can look for. We can look for the fiber content. Uh, we want to make sure that a whole grain has at least three grams of fiber or more. That way we know it's actually a whole grain. Um, just to kind of reiterate and practice, looking at this label on the left, the very first ingredient that listed is whole wheat flour. So we know that it's mainly made up of whole wheat flour. Um, on the other column, under total carbohydrates, we have dietary fiber, which is gonna be five grams, which is really good for a serving of, uh, of bread. For one roll, you get five grams of your fiber. That's about 20% or one fifth of the fiber that you need to get throughout the whole day. Um, so adding a little bit of fiber in every meal uh, adds up quickly and by the end of the day, hopefully that you, you can reach that goal. Um, and like I said, many brands try to advertise that they're made with whole grains, but you need to look at the ingredients. You'll often see that whole grains are just a small part of the entire package, which is mostly made of refined grains instead. So with that being said, that ends this lecture on nutrition label reading. Um, we're gonna get into more. We have two more parts to cover. And um, hopefully we'll be able to still do a grocery store tour uh, before the end of the semester, but we'll see how that goes. Thank you guys and have a good day.